This is, this is a great question. So I'm Dr. Ryan Cole. I'm a pathologist. I uh, am board certified in anatomic and clinical pathology. I have background in virology and immunology as well. The, the question is the vials that have been used around the world, the, uh, the C19 injections that are supposed to be synthetic mRNA wrapped in little fat bubbles, they've been found to be contaminated with DNA. And this was because when they did the original trials, they synthesized in a very technical way with PCR the, the gene sequence before they wrapped it in fat. They realized they couldn't make enough of this to make enough injections, and so they started growing them in bacteria. And they put a little circle of DNA in there called a plasmid. And that plasmid uh, then is, is the pattern or the template to make the RNA. Well, this is supposed to be cleaned out before it goes into the vials. What a dozen laboratories around the world have found now is that these vials are contaminated with DNA. And not just DNA, but the Pfizer has a couple of little gene sequences in it from a monkey virus called simian virus number 40. It has a little sequence called a gene promoter, and it also has a, a sequence called a nuclear co-localization sequence. So it causes that DNA to go into your nucleus. What many labs have found, and a colleague in South Carolina in the United States found, is there are hundreds of billions of fragments of DNA within these vials. When DNA is small, it can get into your own genetics, into your own genome. Uh, it can also promote cancers. And this little promoter, this simian virus 40 promoter, it can bind to a family of genes in our body. And that family of genes, we, we call it the, the guardian of our genome, P53. If you bind too much of that, you turn that gene off and then cancers can take off or grow quickly. So in my personal lab experience, I was the first pathologist in the world after the shots rolled out to notice that there was an increase in many different types of cancer, especially in younger age groups within my laboratory. At the time, I was seeing about 40,000 40, biopsies a year. So is that anecdotal evidence? Sure. But is it still a large data set? Yes. And then other pathology colleagues around the world started noticing this pattern as well. And we've been able to start seeing from data sets around the world that there's an increase in many different types of cancers in many age groups after the rollout of these genetic-based injections, this gene transfection that we know now, as I just mentioned, are contaminated. So I understand recently here there was contamination of some soda bottles of a certain brand. And when that was found, those were pulled off the market immediately when people were harmed. What's fascinating to me is a dozen laboratories around the world have confirmed this contamination, and yet these products are still allowed to roll out. Every country on earth right now, their regulatory authorities should pull vials, test them, and if any DNA is in these, they should be pulled off the market immediately. In the United States, our attorney general in each state has the responsibility for safety of consumer products. In the United States, every state should do the same. Here in Europe, every country, every regulatory agency in every country should what we call impound some of these vials, test them. If there are impurities, like multiple independent laboratories have found, these need to be pulled off the market immediately. Is it what's causing the cancer? Maybe. Are there other mechanisms as well? Is the, the synthetic mRNA impure as well? It is. It is, and we know that small fragments of RNA can cause cancer as well. Now, in addition to that, the wall of some of the bacteria is in these vials as well. And that's called an endotoxin and a, and a fragment called a lipopolysaccharide, LPS. 
these can also cause immediate shock and immediate death. So we know in many injection centers around the world after the rollout of, of these um, investigational experimental products, a lot of people died instantly with an allergic reaction, uh, a, an anaphylactic shock. So that's also because these were grown in bacteria and these processes weren't disclosed to the world. And this is, this is what should concern every parliamentarian in every country, every health regulator in every country, but instead we hear, oh, safe and effective, safe and effective. I like to say in all my presentations, you can't find what you don't look for. Those of us who are curious scientists have been seeing odd patterns, so we've been looking. This should have been done by all the regulators in the world. They should have spent billions ensuring safety. They didn't. And so the public did not receive informed consent. Thankfully here in Croatia, a lot of people refused the shots and were able to avoid them. But in other countries, a lot of people didn't. Now we understand every day more and more why more and more people are being harmed. So I think this is a very important message for the, the world and for, the, for physicians who supposedly care about their patients, they should look into these things. And so as a pathologist, that's what I'm seeing. That's what my laboratory and other laboratories have found. We'll continue to look, but at this point, this dangerous product needs to be pulled from the market. Yeah, my message to the injured vaccinated people is don't give up hope. There are those of us who know that these experimental projects, products have caused a lot of injury. And there are a lot of scientists around the world trying a lot of different therapies, trying to reverse some of the autoimmune conditions. Obviously these cancers are behaving differently than traditional cancers because some of the reasons I mentioned this is where a lot of funding needs to go from agencies into research to try to help these people. Don't give up hope. You're still alive. I know you're suffering. Your suffering is real. And every day we find new things that are helping. So to the vaccine injured, we, we see you. We acknowledge you. We know what you're going through is real. Stay hopeful and keep, keep trying as new things come out.